Lockheed Martin is having a tough year, building the SR-72, a turbine-based combined cycle engine-powered successor to the reigning king of speed, The SR-72 son of the Blackbird may be the most capable concept aircraft ever created, which leads me to the SR-72 and one of the biggest adaptations that we're gonna see in the SR-72. There are rare junctures in military aviation when speculation evolves into reality, redefining the limits of global power. The world now approaches such a moment. After years of rumors, speculation, and classified whispers, reports of the SR-72 Dark Star have shifted from conjecture to confirmation. The US Air Force has publicly discussed the SR-72 program and signaled its operational ambitions with credible indications particularly from Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, that a first flight is planned for 2025. This next step in aerospace design draws directly upon the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, itself a pinnacle of Cold War technology. The transition from the SR-71's Mark III speeds to the reported Mark VI aspirations of the SR-72 is more than incremental. It represents a generational leap in performance, stealth, and mission scope. As Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works, the secretive engineering group behind many of America's most advanced aircraft, details its vision, anticipation grows over what this new platform means for deterrence and rapid global response. What does it signify for US global influence to possess a jet that could potentially reach any point on the planet within an hour? In a world marked by peer competition and contested airspace, how will the SR-72 redefine the boundaries of air power and prompt global strike? The announcement that the plane is moving from concept to scheduled milestone marks a new phase in military capability, one less defined by secrecy and rumor and more by technical achievement and strategic messaging. Legacy of Speed, from Blackbird to Dark Star. Understanding the promise of the SR-72 requires a look back at the original Blackbird. Conceived and built in the urgency of the Cold War, the SR-71 was a marvel. Cruising at over Mach 3, at altitudes topping 80,000 feet, it gathered intelligence with impunity, outpacing and outmaneuvering defensive efforts by adversaries. Its existence changed how the U.S. perceived and approached global reconnaissance, with speed and altitude providing security previously unmatched by other platforms. However, with the end of the Cold War and the rise of ever more sophisticated air defenses and reconnaissance satellites, the utility of the SR-71 faded. Its roles were diffused among newer systems. Still for decades, no successor matched its unique blend of speed, reach, and survivability. Military needs continued to evolve. The increasing speed and reach of surface-to-air missiles, the global proliferation of detection networks, and the unpredictable pace of emerging crises called for capabilities beyond those found in traditional aircraft or satellites. Suddenly, the prospect of hypersonic, near-invisible flight once the domain of blue sky research became a strategic imperative. It was within this context that talk of the SR-72, sometimes referenced as the Son of Blackbird, began to surface. Rumors and unconfirmed sightings of unusual aircraft further fueled speculation. Lockheed Martin kept to guarded statements while hypersonic research ramped up. Test imagery and UFO-like aircraft Glimpsed above remote American bases created further intrigue, though concrete details remained elusive. With the increased openness surrounding the SR-72 in recent communications, capped by a projected first flight in 2025, the line between myth and reality gives way to tangible milestones. Concurrent with renewed great power competition and the rapid advance of missile and sensor technologies worldwide, demonstrates an intent not just to innovate technologically, but to project strategic confidence.
technical ambitions, the hypersonic frontier. Hypersonic flight, defined as speeds exceeding Mach 5, is an engineering frontier full of immense challenges. The SR-72, as described, is envisioned to reach Mach 6, doubling the speed of its predecessor and far outpacing any current operational platform. Translating these ambitious numbers into reality depends on breakthroughs in key fields, propulsion, materials science, avionics, and stealth technology. Conventional turbojet and afterburner engines cannot withstand or operate efficiently at sustained hypersonic speeds. Instead, the SR-72 is associated with the use of combined cycle engines, specifically turbine-based combined cycle, TBCC, or scramjet technologies, which transition from traditional thrust at low speeds to air breathing, supersonic combustion at hypersonic velocities. This technological path is not hypothetical. Lockheed Martin and its partners have reported significant progress and test demonstrations on component systems, though the full integration for operational flight remains unprecedented at this scale. The hypersonic regime brings extraordinary thermal loads, requiring aerospace materials capable of surviving temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius. Composite ceramics, advanced alloys, and new approaches to thermal management are essential to functioning at these extremes. Unlike the SR-71, which was crewed, the SR-72 is planned as an uncrewed, unmanned aircraft. This brings both advantages and challenges. By removing the pilot, the airframe can be optimized for speed, stealth, and survivability without the limits imposed by human endurance or requirements for cockpit safety systems. Avionics, guidance, and mission controls rely on sophisticated autonomy and human-on-the-loop supervision, an increasingly common feature in modern air power. A global reach that changes strategy. The chief strategic attribute of the SR-72 is speed combined with range, the possibility of reaching any spot within a single hour. For decades, long-range bombers, cruise missiles, and intercontinental ballistic missiles each had their roles defined by the trade-off between speed, accuracy, risk, and survivability. Hypersonic aircraft, if they live up to their billing, undermine these old distinctions. The concept of prompt global strike emerges. The ability to hold distant targets at risk within minutes, without warning, and with the flexibility to climb to, or disengage from, contested airspace as the situation dictates. For intelligence, this means the potential to gather real-time, near-in-theater reconnaissance with unpredictable overhead passes, less vulnerable to deception tactics timed to satellite orbits. For strike, it means compressing the time between decision and effect, to degrees that challenge traditional warning and response cycles. This capability reverberates through adversary planning. When time is no longer a barrier, command and control nodes, high-value mobile units, and other priority targets become more vulnerable. The cost of dispersal, deception, and defense rises, and the balance of deterrence and escalation may shift accordingly. Stealth reimagined for the hypersonic era. One of the defining characteristics of Skunk Works aircraft is stealth, and the SR-72 is expected to leverage next-generation design to minimize detection. The original Blackbird used shaping and radar-absorbing materials to reduce observability, though it predated the contemporary stealth revolution. The SR-72, benefiting from decades of advances, is described as having an advanced angular design for minimal radar return. Every measure is directed at reducing the chances of detection from ground-based and airborne sensors alike. However, at Mark 6, the challenges of detection are complex. The heat generated by the airframe creates a thermal signature that infrared sensors can exploit, and the frictional heating threatens both survivability and signature control. The solutions, high temperature coatings, active cooling, and optimized exhaust treatments are crucial not only for overall airframe longevity, but to preserve survivability in hostile airspace. The autonomy of an uncrewed platform also brings opportunities for stealth enhancements, 
Lacking a cockpit and associated systems, the aircraft's shape and systems can be even more tightly optimized for low observability. Moreover, electronic warfare and decoy deployment could be integrated into the mission package, further confusing adversary networks. Defense implications? What adversaries face? The consequences of a functioning SR-72 are stark for US adversaries. Current long-range air defense systems, such as Russia's S-400 or China's HQ-9, would find it immensely challenging to intercept a target traveling at hypersonic speed and with reduced radar cross-section. Sensor fusion and defense architecture improvements become necessary, but even then, the engagement window is minimal. The combination of uncrewed operation, stealth, and hypersonic speed open scenarios in which the SR-72 could bypass or outpace current and near-future air defense systems. In addition to reconnaissance, it could serve as a prompt strike platform, potentially delivering small, precise, hypersonic weapons. Though official details on payload and armament remain unconfirmed and likely classified, this potential forces strategic recalculation. In a world where major powers invest heavily in layered air defenses, the very premise of airspace sanctuary is disrupted. Even the psychology of deterrence shifts. The knowledge that response time is cut to a fraction and that any location could be reached complicates adversary planning and may alter peacetime posture, dispersal, and readiness measures. transparency and strategic messaging. For years, the reality of the SR-72 was a matter of speculation and ambiguity, the subject of forums, analysis, and occasional sensational headlines. Now, with more concrete disclosures and the scheduling of a first flight, the program has moved from rumor to reality in the public eye. This is not accidental. Strategic ambiguity can itself be a form of deterrence, but once a capability nears practical demonstration, transparency becomes a signaling tool. By revealing the existence and progress of the SR-72, the United States is not merely boasting technological achievement, it is delivering a message to rivals about the durability of its air power lead. While specifics about operational capability, deployment schedules, or mission profiles remain classified, the acknowledgement of a first flight timeline is a deliberate act shaping expectations among adversaries and allies alike. This evolution from secrecy to disclosure parallels previous generational shifts in military technology. The introduction of stealth bombers, cruise missiles, or reconnaissance satellites. The confirmation triggered new waves of research, countermeasure development, and doctrinal adaptation. The SR-72, as the first widely reported hypersonic aircraft of this type, will likely spark even more intense focus. Arms control and stability considerations. With the arrival of hypersonic aircraft like the SR-72, long-standing arms control frameworks are challenged. Most treaties and agreements date to an era when missile and aircraft technology were subject to distinct categories and clear timelines for detection and response. Hypersonics erase many of these distinctions, compressing warning and decision cycles and blurring the lines between reconnaissance and strike. The rapidity and ambiguity introduced by hypersonic capabilities increase the risk of miscalculation. For example, if an adversary cannot distinguish whether a fast approaching platform is gathering intelligence or preparing to deliver ordnance, crisis stability may suffer. Accordingly, arms control experts and policymakers have called for renewed dialogue on how to manage escalation and interpret the signals associated with these emerging technologies. At the same time, the US lead in hypersonic platforms could provide some measure of deterrence against both conventional and strategic challenges, at least so long as effective countermeasures and competing platforms lag behind. Yet experience shows that technological advantage compels investment by others. The broader diffusion of hypersonic technologies now appears inevitable. The path ahead, opportunities and risks. 
the anticipated operational debut of the SR-72 in 2025, while significant, will not single-handedly redefine all aspects of air power. The challenges of integrating new technologies at this speed and complexity remain formidable. Reliability, maintainability, mission adaptability, and cost effectiveness all await practical demonstration. There are also strategic limits. The very attributes that make the SR-72 formidable, unmanned operation, hypersonic speed, and stealth, also create dependence on supporting systems. Secure communications, resilient command and control, and persistent intelligence. Adversary efforts in electronic warfare, cyber operations, and sensor fusion will doubtless intensify in response, seeking vulnerabilities to exploit. Meanwhile, the US will have to balance the roles of the SR-72 against the complementary strengths of satellites, conventional aircraft, and hypersonic missiles. Allies will watch closely, seeking reassurance as well as knowledge transfer, while rivals accelerate counter-hypersonic research including missile defenses, high-powered lasers, and adaptable early warning architectures. The unfolding narrative, from secret project to strategic variable. Perhaps the greatest legacy of the ESAR-72 is not the technical breakthrough alone, but the precedent it sets for how innovation, secrecy, and strategic communication interplay on the world stage. As major powers race to develop hypersonics in both offensive and defensive capacities, the shifting baseline of what is possible will remake doctrines and expectations for years to come. The very public scheduling of a first flight in 2025 marks a tipping point. While operational details remain withheld and much of the public narrative still relies on deduction, the existence of a program, now openly discussed by both the US Air Force and Lockheed Martin, alters adversary planning in immediate, concrete ways. The world's militaries are unlikely to remain passive. Russian and Chinese investments in hypersonic missiles and new air defense technologies signal the beginning of another round of aviation and missile development competition. Even as the US temporarily pulls ahead, the arms race for speed, stealth, and survivability will only accelerate. Conclusion. The skies change. Doctrine evolves. With the impending first flight of the SR-72 Dark Star, the United States signals both continuity and change. A sustained commitment to air superiority and an embrace of unmanned hypersonic and stealth technologies for 21st century strategizing. The balance of air power pivots not only via operational platforms, but through the message such platforms deliver to both friends and adversaries. Deterrence may be strengthened, but so too may the risks of rapid escalation and confusion in future crises. Arms control frameworks, alliance commitments, and global security calculations will all require adaptation. What is clear, however, is that with programs like the SR-72, the US shapes not only the technological dimension of competition, but the very outline of strategic possibility. The SR-72 is no longer just a notion relegated to black budgets and rumor mills. Its development, now on the threshold of public demonstration and operational reality, stands as a testament to the evolving interplay between innovation, secrecy, and security in our time. As the scheduled debut of the SR-72 draws closer, its impact on military doctrine and global air power will continue to unfold, leaving an indelible mark on the speed, reach, and nature of 21st century strategic competition. The era of hypersonic flight is upon us. The full implications for deterrence, defense, and broader international stability will only become clear with time. But this much is sure, the United States, with the Dark Star, stands at the forefront of the unfolding future of air power, and the world will be watching as that future takes flight.